In our last video, we previewed the upcoming KDE installer that planned us an addition to the normal FreeBSD install TUI. If you missed that, there's a link to it coming up around here about now. We also asked you folks what other desktop environments or window managers you'd like to see us install on FreeBSD. After going through over 400 comments, we've narrowed it down to a list of 10. So it only seemed right that I tried installing them all. In the process, I discovered a gem of a tool in ports that makes life a lot easier for installing many DEs. So let's take a look at it. I'm not going to go through all 10 installs here because that would be way too boring for you all to watch. Uh, because fundamentally, it's just one script, which we'll cover in a second. Um, before we do an actual install of a desktop, though, I just want to show you something uh, that's been an absolute lifesaver whilst I've been doing all of this testing, and that is boot environments. So we're on a 15.0 release. Uh, it's on the laptop. Um, I've got a very basic setup with a few packages that I just want to use. Um, it makes my terminal a little bit more comfortable. But fundamentally, this is a clean environment before we do any sort of graphical install. And if we look at boot environments with the B cuttle command, um, you will see all of the different uh, window uh, managers and desktop environments we've got here. And there's one there called clean. And that's basically what I've been using for each and every um, window manager install. So all I have to do is be cuttle create minus E because it's an environment that I'm not currently in at the moment, clean and then new WMMV. That's just a label that we give it. And if I now do a list, you'll see that we've got that new WMMV. So that's a completely clean environment we can boot into with be cuttle activate new WM env. And now when we do a list, you can see that the currently active environment, the N for now is our XFC, XFCE environment. And on reboot, we will boot to the new WM env. There is also an option to choose the boot environment from the FreeBSD boot uh, menu when you first start up. Quite handily, you just go into the boot environment option here and where it says active environment, you can basically choose A or two and it will just cycle through the ones that you have. And on this boot, it will boot whichever option that you picked here. So then you just go back to the main menu, choose boot, and it will boot the environment that you've chosen. There's something very obvious that will have struck you about boot environments too, and that's their use during upgrades. If you update a system after doing uh, be cuttle create, you will have the environment as it stood before the update and an environment um, how it stood after the update. So if something goes wrong with the patching process, you can just reboot to the old environment and sort it out. Up to FreeBSD 15, uh, FreeBSD update command actually did this automatically. So anyway, let's stick with this one for now and go through an installation of XFCE. After our last video doing the desktop install of KDE, somebody passed a, a comment about a great package that is already in the package repository called desktop installer. This uh, set of scripts is really handy for setting up window managers and desktop environments based on X11. It doesn't support Wayland. So for the Wayland environments that we've got in this list, we'll come back to that in a moment and I'll talk to that a little bit more. But for setting up X11 environments, desktop installer is really simple and really easy and has allowed me to set up Cinnamon, Fluxbox, Gnome, Ice, LXQT, Mate and Windowmaker. What we'll go through now is setting up XFCE with it. So basically all you need to do is package install desktop installer and then run the desktop installer script which will guide us through doing the setup. 
Now, I'm not going to pause for long, but I highly recommend reading each of these notes that come up as guidance because they're very informative and they're very helpful. And there are steps later on in the process where we'll want to pay close attention to what it says. I've been picking just the essentials and not doing the advanced options. I did run through one advanced option and it just gives some more things that I'm not too fussed about, uh, but you might want to test it. I'm confident the system is already up, uh, updated here anyway, so I'm not going to um, I'm not going to do a reboot. Just out of interest, how many of you call it X Face? <laughs> I've been mostly taking the defaults for these. Yes, we want to do that. Uh, display manager. I've just been taking the defaults here and depending on what the window manager is, um, it either proffers XDM or SDDM or in the case of GNOME, it proffers GDM. Here, the best thing to do is say yes and go through it. Because of the way that I've been doing screen recording, I've actually already got the AMD GPU DRM module loaded. So I've not been going through this section. That was a simple case of uh, package install uh, DRM K mod. You probably want to say yes to this. Now, I know that this is going to work, so I'm going to say no here just so I can progress on. When you do say yes here, this script is not finished and you need to exit whatever it brings up to come back to this command prompt to continue. So just be aware of that. I'm actually going to say no here, although you might want to say yes. All that will mean is I will have to start XFCE manually rather than getting a GUI login prompt to start it. I'm going to say yes to Firefox, but no to some of these other things. You might want to choose them. As I mentioned, it's worth reading all of these little guidance text boxes carefully when you first go through this. And that's it done. It's worth paying attention to this at the end, depending on what the system is that you're using to build this on top of. Some things may have been installed from ports. As it happens, everything that I've tested has come from package. So it's all been just packages rather than building from source. So this message, as much as it says using auto admin, I could probably get away with just doing package upgrade, but do pay attention to it. Worth noting this URL here at the end, because if you have any problems with the installer, that's the place to go. Let's take a look and see if it works. So on this framework laptop, this is a high resolution display. And when I first loaded up XFCE, I found that um, <laughs> I could barely see a thing. Um, under applications, settings and appearance, the final tab here, settings, I had to set window scaling to 2x in order to be able to actually see anything. But here we go. If we run up terminal and run good old fast fetch, you can see here we are, XFCE4 loaded. And it was pretty easy just following that desktop installer script. And that's how all of these environments have been built. Now, I said that I was going to mention that this desktop installer script only works for X11 and not Wayland things. And in the comments to the last video, a number of people did ask for Wayland based window managers, Sway and Hyperland. So to install those, what I have found is they're actually a lot simpler. Basically, if you do a package install Sway, it will drag in everything that you need to be able to run it. Um, and Wayland setup seems to just work straight out of the box, at least on this machine that I've been working with anyway. So one of the things I would say about the Wayland window managers is just do package install the particular window manager you want. Most of the work from setting those managers up actually comes from finding the configuration for the window manager itself. So for example, I've been using Sway for a while anyway, so I have a Sway config, which is why 
it looks the way it does. Uh, one last caveat. Uh, a few people did ask to see Niri running and uh, I can't get that to work. Every time I've tried it, it's just uh, crashed. And I've been doing a little bit of searching and looking around the internet to find an answer to it. And a few people have suggested compiling, but um, I've still not managed to get that to work. So apologies that I couldn't show you Niri. And uh, if somebody manages to get that working, if you'd like to leave a link in the comments to how you got it working, I'm sure the rest of the community here that was asking for it would really appreciate that input. This is only about my seventh or eighth take at this. Hopefully I can get it right this time.